in today's video, we will simulate the phenomenon of a laminar flow occurring through a circular pipe that is being heated by convection occurring due to a constant heat flux subjected to the walls of the pipe and validate it with analytical results. We will start from concepts that we have already discussed, like hydrodynamic entry length and have a brief discussion about what is meant by thermally developed flow and how it affects the concept of a fully developed flow and the meaning and significance of Prandtl number, which will be followed by a brief description of the governing differential equations and the necessary assumptions, which will help simplify the GDEs. We will then look at the problem definition, which will include understanding the problem and interpreting the, the pipe parameters and the fluid properties as well. After this, we will move on to the actual process of simulation, which will range from geometry construction and its discretization to the simulation setup. We will then conclude with the post-processing of data to be able to check the simulated results against the theoretical results. The concept of hydrodynamically developed flow has been covered in laminar flow through a pipe video. For detailed explanations, please refer to the same using the link in the description. Similar to the concept of hydrodynamically developed flow, there is the concept of thermally developed flow. It is characterized by the flow occurring after the fluid passes the thermal entry length. The thermal entry length is approximately equal to the product of the diameter of the pipe. It's Reynolds number and the Prandtl number of the fluid divided by 20. A thermally fully developed flow is identified when the non-dimensionalized temperature profile remains unchanged. In our case of convective heat transfer through a pipe, the flow will be referred to as fully developed only when both the hydrodynamic and thermal regions of the flow are fully developed. Similar to hydrodynamically fully developed flow, where there isn't change in the friction factor for a thermally developed flow, the heat transfer coefficient does not change, assuming the fluid properties remain constant. The figure on the right shows the, the variation of the heat transfer coefficient and the friction factor along the length of the pipe. Prandtl number is the ratio of momentum diffusivity of a fluid to its thermal diffusivity. For Prandtl number greater than one, the thermal entry length is greater than the hydrodynamic entry length. While for liquids having a Prandtl number less than one, the thermal length is less than the hydrodynamic entry length, and for a Prandtl number equal to one, the thermal and hydrodynamic entry lengths are of the same length. We will now have a brief discussion about the governing equations which describe the behavior of flow through a pipe. We have assumed the flow to be steady, fully developed, laminar, and with its properties being constant. Additionally, the effect of gravity is neglected by conservation of energy equation and simple rearranging. We can find out the exit temperature, Te, of the fluid. The figure on the right depicts the meaning of the equation at the bottom, which tells that the rate of increase or decrease of both the surf temperature and the mean temperature will be the same after the entry length. The fully developed temperature profile is a function of both the radius and the length of the pipe. We know that the temperature at the center of the profile has a maxima that is the derivative of the temperature at the center of the pipe is zero. Additionally, due to constant wall flux at maximum radius, the appropriate boundary condition is considered. Both these boundary conditions are plugged into the governing differential equation after integrating twice, which provides the functions for both the mean temperature and the wall temperature. The following is the problem considered for the simulation along with its tight dimensions and the fluid properties, which are assumed to remain constant throughout the simulation. Using the mentioned formulae and relations, 
we can analytically find out the answers. The following are the parameters valid for the flow described in the problem, which are to be validated against the simulated results. The geometry and meshing is the same as used in the laminar flow through a, a circular pipe having constant temperature video. And for detailed explanation, please refer to the same using the link in the description. Now open Fluent and click Double Precision. After Fluent is fully opened, use the Scale option to view the dimensions of the geometry. Click on Check Mesh to ensure all mesh data is read correctly, and there are no errors. We will be using pressure-based solver under steady state conditions as stated by our assumptions. When dealing with heat generation or temperature variation, we must enable energy equation in fluent. In the materials tab, the fluid properties will be specified which resemble the fluid used. Uh, thus add water liquid as fluid and edit its properties as per the problem definition. However, in the cell zone commission, edit the material name and change it to water liquid. The unit of temperature by default is Kelvin and fluent. We can change it to Celsius for ease of use. Now in the boundary condition, click on the inlet and go to thermal tab and set the temperature, same as the inlet temperature and velocity. So similarly assign constant wall flex to wall and no slick condition, which is the default assignment to the wall by fluent. In the monitors, tab set the residual, which is the convergence criteria, to 10 rays to minus 6 for better convergence. The solution methods and controls are used as with their respective default settings. Create a new surface report definition with the report type as mass weighted average. And Select temperature with the surface as outlet for checking the outlet temperature. Now click on the initialization tab and select hybrid initialization. Now click run calculation with the maximum iteration set to desired value. And Click on Calculate. After calculation, create lines and ISO surfaces using the line and rake tool and a specified coordinates as shown. You can name it as per your choice as well to avoid confusion.
that youthful lions created to plot the temperature profiles at regular intervals along the length of the pipe. Also check the velocity profile at the outlet to confirm whether the flow is hydrodynamically developed. Create a line at the center of the pipe to verify the hydrodynamic entry length by determining the center line velocity. After successful post-processing, the results will be as follows. The figure on the left represents the hydrodynamic velocity profile at the outlet in comparison with the theoretical velocity profile. The figure on the right represents the hydrodynamic entry length with respect to the theoretical entry length. The following figures show the variation of actual temperature profile and the non-dimensionalized temperature profile along the length of the pipe. Figure number eight shows that there is no change in non-dimensionalized temperature profile after the thermodynamic entry length, meaning the thermal profile is fully developed at uh, 0.25 meters. This means that the flow is fully developed, meaning both the hydrodynamic and thermal profiles are developed after 0.25 meters. Figure number nine represents the variation of surface temperature and mean temperature along the lengths of the pipe. And we can observe that after entry length, both are of the same slope. Figure number 10 represents the comparison of the theoretical and the simulated temperature profile at the outlet. Figure number 11 and 12 represents the variation of heat transfer coefficient and friction factor along the lengths of the pipe. And we can observe that both stop varying after entry length. The following table show the analytical and simulated results for different parameters and the error between them. Did you think about properties being a function of temperature? Do property variation play a significant role in real life problems? If so, then which property should be given significance and modeled as varying with temperature? For more information regarding the concepts and derivation of the governing differential equations, the following references can be used. That's all for today's video. If you have any doubts or suggestions, please do comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching, and we'll meet in the next video.